So, I'm on the way to a conference this morning. Check this out. This is literally the road to get out of my <laughs> beach property to get on the highway to get to the actual event. Are the mountains beautiful? So anyways, it's early morning and um, I was on Facebook a couple of days ago and I saw one of my mortgage broker friends post that they had won. Got it. A trip to Costa Rica for their top producers conference for their organization. And I thought, oh man, I've got some incredible value and in things that I've been learning. And I have not done a live stage presentation in over two okay. years since COVID started. And so I reached out to the guys who own the company and I said, yo, I'm living down the road why don't we get together? I've got this presentation for your people. I think it would be really valuable. They agreed. And so now it's Saturday morning and I am on the way to a gorgeous resort to deliver a one hour keynote. We're gonna do our absolute best to get the AV working so that you can ride along with us and get the same incredible value as these top 10 producers in the organization. So I'll see you there. Had to stop for gas on the way. One of the things that I absolutely love about it here is that you can't pump your own gas. They won't even let you. When you go to a gas station, it's full of, and this one, they're all in green shirts. You can't really see it. But there's like eight guys here with eight pumps and they come up and they're like, do you want us to pump up your tires? Do you want us to wash your windshield? They don't charge anything extra for it, but it's like against culture to pump your own gas. There's people here that do it for you. It's amazing. Okay, this is noteworthy. We've been here for over a month. That is the first stoplight I've seen. Legit, the first stop. We're getting close. I've been 20 minutes <laughs> at the security gate. They won't let me in because they don't have me on today's register. <laughs> Presto. Change up. This is my first time in front of people in about two and a half years. So I'll apologize if I'm a little bit nervy -y and nervous up front, but we'll get into it right away. So um, I need you to pull out your paper and pen, uh, despite my mullet-esque outfit that I have on for you today. Got business up top, party down below. Um, <laughs> I, I <will> <laughs> kind of a funny story why I'm here today because uh, my family and I are living remotely in Costa Rica. We're actually an hour and a half down the road and we do that every winter, which is, uh, thank you. I, Extend the street. Oh, cool, yeah. Um, thank you. Not a professional presenter. Um, all right, cool. So um, is Krista here? Which one? Which one, yeah. Oh, okay, like so Lindstrom, Krista Lindstrom. Yes, there you are, hello. Your pictures on Facebook have been amazing, by the way. It's like you're having an amazing time. I love it here. So like, I want to move here too, like you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, okay, so I digress. We'll go quickly, because I have a lot of content to go through. But I met my wife 12 years ago, and we met on Boxing Day. And I had just gotten back from the Philippines, and we met, and it was like one of those things where like you fall in love instantly, and I was like, four hours into the conversation, I was like, listen, if we're gonna do this thing and we're gonna date and we're gonna live together, I'm never gonna winter again in Canada because this sucks. And she was like, okay. So here we are 12 years later and 11 out of those 12 years, we've lived remotely for the winter, which is pretty cool. Um, our kids are with us. So my, uh, my daughter is five, my son is seven and they homeschool with us. So we're living an hour and a half down the road. So I saw your pictures on Facebook that you were in Costa Rica for a top producer conference. So I reached out to the Gords and I said, guys, I've been working on a presentation just for top producers, just for elite people in the mortgage industry. I've never shared it with anybody. I would love to come and share it with your group. And they were gracious enough to accept me. So thank you for having me right here. Back at you. All thank you for having me here. Uh, Krista, <laughs> if, I bomb, if I bomb this presentation, it's your fault. <laughs> I think you owe me like a martini or something. Right there. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, 100%. I will.
Okay, so at this point in the presentation, there's a bunch of preamble. We're gonna skip past that to save you time and get you right to the content, but there's one important thing that was in there that I wanted to make sure that was in the presentation, and that is where the concepts that I'm teaching in this presentation came from, because these are not all my ideas. We didn't invent these at Connection Incorporated. What we lay out in this presentation are seven specific ways that you can double your mortgage business, and a lot of these strategies have come from working with our most successful clients in Connection Incorporated. I'll give you an example of this. Like one of our clients came to us and said, Chris, I understand that my database marketing is a phenomenal source of business for us, but I just don't have time to do it. You have your concierge callers calling all of my leads from Google and Facebook. Could you just have your concierge agents call my database for me? And that created our database calling product where we're now calling the database and the strategy that goes along with it. Now, another caveat there, our most successful clients at Connection Incorporated, most of them come from the Mortgage Marketing Animals and the Freedom Club and my good friend Carl White. I cannot recommend their company enough. If you're in the mortgage industry, you should be learning from Carl. And if you're at a certain level and looking to go to the next level, the whole goal is to get you to a point by the end of this hour that you can look down at the sheet of paper and say, you know what, I can double my business. It does not matter what level you're at. You can be doing five deals a month. You can be doing 50 deals a month. I know that the systems and processes that I'm about to give you here for the next hour can double your business. Hands down, I will personally guarantee it. But two things have to happen. One, you've got to give me your undivided attention for an hour and actually do the work that I ask you to do while we're on the session together. And then two, I need you to go home and actually implement it. We're about to have a blast, like a rocking time. We're at Planet Freaking Hollywood in Costa Rica, man. This is really yeah. cool shit rock stars come here and party, party, which I want you to do. But when you get back to the office, I want you to walk back with the sheets of paper that you get from this hour, and I want you to change your life with them. That's my goal here today. I have nothing to sell you. I can't sell you anything. I think I'm. We don't have a contract, but I consider myself contractually obligated to not take your money today. It's the first time I've ever done a stage presentation. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But nothing for sale, okay? Will you give me an hour of your time and stay dedicated and do this work with Yes. Let's kick it, okay? Everybody has a sheet of paper? I want you to write down on that sheet of paper how much you make on average per deal. This is napkin math, doesn't have to be perfect, you don't have to get into your actual data. When you fund a mortgage, what is the net revenue that comes from that deal? How much money do you make per deal? Underneath that number, I want you to write down the current number of deals that you're doing each month right now. So if we were to take an average of the last six months, write down on the sheet of paper, on average, how many deals you're doing per month right now in your mortgage business. Underneath that, I want you to write down the goal for the number of deals that you're going to do in your business. So if we're sitting here one year from today, the mortgage production that you want to be doing, okay? You can use double. That's what most people in the mortgage business do. When my salespeople get on the phone with people and they're like, where are you trying to go? I'm trying to double my mortgage business is the answer more than 75% of the time. So you can start with a goal like that. So then what I want you to do is I want you to take that new number and I want you to times it by the number that you make per deal when you close a transaction. And that will give you the increase in the revenue that you're going to make in your company by doing the work that we're about to do here together. Does that all make sense? So there's a rough example. I have these slides available for you. I'll show you how to text and get the slides in a minute here. But I've done a base on 2,500. That seems to be the average across Canada. You make $2,500 per deal. If you're doing 10 deals a month, we're gonna go to 20 deals a month. That takes you from 120 deals a year to 240 deals a year. And that is an increase on your annual income of $600,000. If you're making $2,500 per deal and you go from doing 120 loans a month or 120 loans a year to 240 loans a year, you're making $1.2 million a year and you've increased your income by $600,000, okay? It's just math, that's how it works, right? We're just the activity that has to do this stuff. So now, we're gonna take 30 seconds because we don't have a whole lot of time, but I need you to anchor this thought into your subconscious mind. <laughs> yeah, we just went woo-woo with it. 
this stuff works, okay? I want you to think about a person, I want you to think about a thing, I want you to think about an experience, I want you to think about something that's so important to you that you would break open a car that's on fire in order to get it inside. For me, it's my children, right? Some people want a big fancy house, some people want a big lake house, some people want Lamborghinis, stuff like that. <laughs> um, as a, an aside, did you know that if you get four mortgage professionals, or sorry, if you get four realtors sending you a deal a month, that's enough to cover two Lamborghinis? Um, just four of them. Do math, right? But what I want you to do is I want you to anchor in your mind that thing, the thing that you're going to get with the money, okay? For me, it's freedom. For three months out of the year, I escape the freaking cold, I take my kids, we live wherever the heck we want, right? My wife gets to pick, my marriage is good, my kids are happy, I'll do anything to provide that experience for my family. That stuff takes money. So I gotta have a plan to get the money so that I can have the experience. That's where I anchor this, right? Cars, boats, whatever it is. Does everybody have it? Close your eyes, imagine it in your mind. The sound of the beach, sound of the car, <coughs> opening the door, what does the lobby look like in that house? Take it, it's yours. Your brain will figure out how to get it, but if you're not pointing the ship, it's got no idea where it's gonna go. We anchored? Cool, all right, that's why we're doing the work, okay? It's gonna suck, you're gonna call realtors, they're gonna say no, next, whatever. I'm not worried about the realtor who said no, I'm worried about my kids in the beach, right? Every time you run into that thing that stops you, you anchor back to this moment and that thing that you thought of, and it's easy to get past any of the things that you run into that are gonna stop you, okay? So now we're unstoppable. We can get this plan implemented. Do we agree? Yes. Yes, all right, cool. So. We're gonna go past the lifestyle planning. You guys can figure out the money on your own. Now we're gonna get results. There are three ways to grow your mortgage business. Crazy simple. You have your database and the people that you are actively doing business with right now. The current customers that you're doing business with and the past customers that you've done business with should be the largest source of business in your mortgage business. If it's not, today is the day that you change and you make it that by creating a new process to it. The second way to grow your mortgage business is through referral partners. That's realtors, financial planners, insurance advisors, all of the people that when they send you business, they buy you Lamborghinis, right? They are our pathway to the customer. The easiest way to get a customer is find all the people who already have your customers and get them to send them to you, right? Referral relationships, super simple. The third thing is marketing and advertising. There is a new pathway. I should retract that a little bit. There is a pathway that generates you the highest quality customers. We've been working at it for about eight years. A lot of you have seen me do a lot of training on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all of these other sources. The way to get the highest quality consumer direct lead in your mortgage business is through your Google business page. About seven months ago, Google flipped a switch and it absolutely dominated Facebook and Instagram. I run a digital marketing agency. We we invest from our clients' money millions of dollars a year in Facebook and Instagram ads. Today, I'm not recommending Facebook and Instagram ads to your direct to consumer. The lead quality has gotten so poor, they've lost so much data, you cannot make it profitably work. The average numbers right now is if you generate 100 leads on Facebook and Instagram, you close one deal, okay? To chase 100 people to close one transaction, when you can call four past customers and get one referral, it doesn't make sense, right? We need to be focused on the lowest hanging fruit, the easiest to get deals with the least amount of effort. I'm gonna walk you through all these. So now we know there's only three pathways to grow the business. It is in descending order. You start with your database first, referral partner second, and then marketing and advertising third. So I have seven pathways to go get business. Each of them fit within these main categories. We're gonna start with your database. These are all of the campaigns that I'm gonna run you through here. On current and past clients, we've got the database activator. Then I'm gonna teach you the retargeting deal machine. Then we're gonna go through pre-approved and referring, which is a new way to think about all of your deals that you have in process. And I'm gonna give you a really cool thing. Then referral partners, selling with service, two with pathways to exponential referrals. Well, we're gonna go through all of them. Y'all can, at the back, you might not be able to see the slide, but I'm gonna give you the slides. This is just to keep us all organized while we go through. 
So referral partners and marketing. This is the database activator, okay? I wanna frame this with the fact that I'm going to tell you that 5% of your database should be referring you deals every three months. So how many past customers do you have in your database? Okay, this is not past leads, this is not past applicants, this is past customers, people that have actually funded a deal with you. Take that number in your mind, write it down on your sheet of paper. I have X number of past customers, times five. Okay, total number of past customers times 5%. Sorry, I forgot the percent. Not the math guy. The percent makes a big difference. Zeros matter. <laughs> so your number of past customers times 5%. You should be getting that number of closed deals in referrals every three months. Okay? So you take that number, you times that by four. Okay? Total database size times 5%. Take that total, times that by four. You're all doing the math in your heads. Nobody's writing it down. <laughs> there we go, okay, we got the math, okay? <laughs> That's your goal. So now think about the first exercise that you did on your sheet of paper. You've got the number of deals that you're supposed to be closing every month in order to make that income. And you know how many deals you're doing right now. So we have a gap, right? Between, let's just say, 10 deals a month and I wanna to get to 20. Well, you just did the math on what your database is worth, so you can take the number of deals that you need and attribute your database to hitting your goal. Now you've got another gap that's smaller on where you have to fill it in with realtor partners and marketing and advertising. Some of you may have just hit your goal. And just, if I do a better job of connecting with my database, getting 5% of them to send me referrals every three months, I'm done, I've hit my goal, right? That's the whole purpose of this exercise that we're going through. So we're gonna do each strategy and then check back the math on how close you are to your goal. Some of you will only have to implement one or two of these strategies. Some of you will have to implement maybe all of them. But if we don't know what we gotta do, there's no way we're gonna get it done. So the database activator, we're gonna base our math on 5%. Most of our clients achieve better than 5%. This is a gentleman named Dan. Uh, Dan's actually a friend of mine. And we ran this exact process that I'm about to give you on 49 of his past customers. He got 17 responses back from his past customers, funded seven deals in less than 60 days. That's from taking the application to actually funding the deal in less than 60 days. Um, seven out of 49 is a 14% conversion ratio on his database, right? We're doing your numbers on just 5%. Here's how the database activator works, okay? It's a process over four days. Um, <laughs> on day one, you call them. Uh, we have a piece of software, it's a very rudimentary, I don't like calling it a CRM, it's a marketing package but it sends emails and text messages and ring of voicemails and stuff like that. But it's designed to sit outside of your database to keep all of your data clean. It's just for marketing. It's not for actually taking deals and processing them through. It has a power dialer in it. So you upload your clients and you click the call button and it just starts dialing. If they don't pick up the phone, it just calls the next phone number. So on day one, you call. Now, when I say you call, Ideally, we want you in a situation in your business where you're not doing any of the work that I tell you about. You have a concierge who runs your phone services and you have a loan officer assistant, which is American for a mortgage broker assistant. That assistant should be the one that's making the calls for you. So you start making the calls, so you have a benchmark on how many deals you get from the activity that you do, and then you hire somebody for far less than the income that you make from the activity and you outsource it to that concierge in your business. So each of the strategies that I'm about to show you, think about, I'm not the one that eventually makes these calls. I have an assistant that makes all of these calls for me. Oddly enough, when we get concierge agents to make these calls, they get a better response because when it's Chris calling on behalf of the James Lowen team, it actually makes the business look larger and more professional, and they truly appreciate that you have taken time out of such a busy business to make sure that somebody follows up with them and make sure that they get everything that they need. So it's actually positioning you at that next level of like, as mortgage brokers, I believe we should be doctors and lawyers, 
right? Somebody walks into your office, it's not your office. They deal with the person at the front desk. The front desk books the appointment. You show up at the appointment, you diagnose the problem, you give them the solution, and then you send them to the pharmacy. The pharmacy is the mortgage broker assistant who takes the application, takes the documentation, chases the pre-approval conditions, gets all the documentation from the client. All of that stuff should be done by other people. You should just be the doctor who walks into the office, spends five minutes with each client, diagnoses it, and then runs the system and processes to make sure that that person spits out the other end with a five-star review and five testimonials waiting for you at the end of the deal. Does that make sense? I apologize I'm going quick, but I know this is a high-level group, so y'all got this, right? Cool, all right, awesome. So the database activator, we start with a phone call on day one. Most people will not pick up the phone. As a nerd, that's great. Don't have to talk to people. I can let the computer do the rest of the work. Yeah. So phone call gets made. Five to ten percent of people will call, or actually pick up the call. This is your script. You're all going to get the slides after this, so I don't have to go through the script. But that was written by a professional copywriter. Me. Then I said to do an actual real professional copywriter who helps me tweak it, make it better, and then you get it here today for free. After the call happens, there's a text message that goes out the next day. The text says, I gave you a call yesterday, wasn't able to connect, I'm calling to connect about your mortgage, give me a shout. Well, anytime you reach out to somebody to tell them you're looking to connect about their mortgage, what are they gonna do? They're gonna call you back. Unless they have three mortgages on their house and they're not paying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So the text message gets the majority of the results. Most of the response that you get is gonna be text message conversations. That's where a lot of the communication is actually happening with your clients. If you're not texting your clients, you're leaving money on the table, hands down. If they don't respond to the text message, the next day an email goes out. If they don't respond to the email, a ringless voicemail goes out on day four. They all reference each other, and it's all built around service of your customers and offering a free mortgage checkup to make sure they're in the right scenario. Your software that we just learned about before this presentation is a phenomenal tool for actually having the analysis <laughs> portion of that call done. Hey, I'm reaching out because I've got a brand new piece of software. It identified that there might be a great opportunity for you to be saving money every month to potentially do that backyard project that you've been looking to do because home prices have gone up so much. It might make sense to do a refinance right now and our tool identified you as one of the people that we might be able to help. Would you like to have a 15 minute call with the doctor? Yes, yes I would, it's great to hear. I'm glad you reached out. Awesome, great, let's get you booked in for a call. Simple stuff, right? How many of you are actively calling your database once a quarter? <laughs> One half hat just came up. <laughs> Legit. Free money. Free money. All you have to do is have to ask call them with a piece of software. It's amazing. This is the number one strategy to go get more money and more deals in your business right now, right? Quick and easy. So We've got the database activator. Here's another client, 21.43% response rate. We'll skip this stuff. You don't need the social proof, you know it works. The retargeting deal machine. How many of you have taken your list of past customers, uploaded it to social media so that you can show ads to just your past customers? Ooh, we, all right, we're good. We're like one for one, just gonna be two for two, okay? Your referral partners will forget about you. When I say referral partners, I mean your past customers. Right? And that's just because we're all completely bombarded with communication. We're busy all of the time, right? What if you could buy a billboard at the bottom of every customer's driveway so that every time they drive to work in the morning, they see your name and your face and they remember to refer you business? Ooh. On average, the average Canadian spends 4.7 hours a week on social media, okay? You can upload your list of past customers and show them four very specific advertisements about your business so they refer you every opportunity that they get. So I've got one guy in our group, Jerry McGuire, put $225 into Facebook ads, closed over $100,000 in income from deals that he closed because he had four women in his database that saw his call to action and they refer every single person that they have inside their private Facebook groups 
when somebody goes in and says, does anybody know a good real estate agent? How many of you are in local buy and sell groups, local moms groups, local church groups? Yeah. <laughs> okay, doing this in front of a live audience is risky, but ladies, how many of you are in private Facebook groups where you're active on at least a daily basis? Yeah. Right? My wife is a machine in Facebook groups. Like she knows everybody. And every time somebody goes on and says, does anybody know a good real estate agent? Your clients need to be programmed for lack of a better phrase, that when they see that message, they go into their photo roll, they take the photo of your business card, and they post it inside the private Facebook group. Legit, write an ad that shows up in your past client's Facebook feed that says that. When you see somebody inside a private Facebook group that's looking for a real estate agent, please screenshot this ad and share my information with them. I'll make sure they get the same great service that all our clients get. Thank you. That's the ad copy. All you're doing is telling them what you want them to do to send you referrals, and they do it. It's amazing. You can blanket your entire past customer database for $5 a day, $150 a month, and get those referrals. It's the greatest ad spend that you can spend in your business. And if you want to get really freaky with it, you then do the exact same thing on Google and YouTube. If you're shooting video marketing for your business, your best audience that's going to generate the best results is people that have already done business with you. So when they log into YouTube to watch videos at night, they should see a pre-roll ad from you educating them about the mortgage process or just asking for the business or just telling them about the food bank drive that you just did or the fact that you're in Costa Rica learning how to grow your business so that you can serve your customers even better. Keeping top of mind, buying mind share, okay? How many of you know the company um, uh, Coca-Cola? <laughs> Anybody here not know Coca-Cola? Largest single brand-based advertiser in the world. Have you ever seen a Super Bowl without a Coca-Cola commercial? Why on earth, if everybody already knows the brand, would they still be buying the advertising? Because mindshare and recency is what drives today's purchase decisions. Keep yourself in front of your past customers by building the relationship with the database activator and then retargeting them on social media so that they never forget about it. Pre-approved and referring. This right here, hands down, you can walk out of the room and make money with right away. So how many of you call your clients in process once a week to give them a status update? Yes, okay, awesome. That is your greatest referral source, okay? Once a week, you should have either a concierge agent or yourself that's making calls to every deal that you have in process. And at the end, I have a script here uh, for you to use, but you're just simply providing them with a status update on their file, letting them know that everything is going well or chasing them for documentation or whatever it is you need from them. And then you end every single conversation with, lately we've started receiving referrals from Facebook groups and I find the more I ask, the more people were able to help. Can I count on you to share my information when you meet people that are looking for a realtor referral or to buy, sell, or refinance? The key phrase there, maybe you mess with the script however you want, can I count on you? Can I count on you? It is a commitment between people that they are going to agree to do something. And when they say, yes, you can count on me, far more of them will actually do the activity. So do those updates. Connect with your clients while they're in process and ask for the business. This is called selling with service. We're transitioning from our database marketing now to our realtor referral partner marketing. How many of you are calling the realtor who referred you the business or that's attached to the deal once a week to provide a status update on the file? Awesome, okay, that's why most of you are in this room. You're professionals, you've got that down. That is amazing. What's the number one pain point for a mortgage broker with a realtor? They're constantly texting me, asking for a status update on the file. So turn it into a product that has tangible value. Don't just call them and say, hey, it's Friday, thought I'd give you an update. Turn it into a product that holds value to them. So what we call them is our milestone status service. I'm calling you from our milestone status service to let you know 
that your deal is in process, the same as it was before, but now that because I've called it something, it holds additional value in the mind of the realtor, and they can go to the other realtors and say, hey, does your, does your mortgage broker provide you with a milestone status? No, I get that. Boy, you should talk to my mortgage broker. He calls me once a week with a milestone status update. You call it something, it's something that they can talk about, right? So you're all doing that, so we'll skip this, but again, your script is right here out of exactly what to say on the phone to position the product and to get them excited about that. Now, I'm gonna share with you a way for every four deals that you do, you get one new realtor referral partner to send you business. This I call the exponential referral partners. It is the exact same script, but you call the realtor on the other side of the deal. What is the number one pain point that all real estate agents have? They're chasing their mortgage broker or the lender at the bank to try and get a status update on their file, okay? Then they get a call from the mortgage broker on the other side of the transaction to say, hey, just wanna let you know on our side of the transaction, everything's good. I've got this milestone status update <laughs> that's absolutely incredible. All of our brokers love it. Just thought that you would like an update on the file. One out of every four people will refer you business on the next deal because they want the milestone status update product. Yes? Is there a problem with disclosing the buyer's approval before the deal is funded to the listing agent? <laughs> I am the worst person on the planet to ask about some buyers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. We do this on the funding day to the listing agent, say yeah. the deal is funded. I just remind me of a problem with doing this so what you do is you tweak the script a little bit and it's something like, hey, I'm the mortgage broker on the other end of the file. I'm really great at what I do. I feel good about this transaction. I'll keep you up to date as much as I can within the law. We'll change the presentation before you get it. <laughs> but legit, be compliant with what it is that you're doing, but make the status update calls you will generate more referrals. So here's the math. There's um, So I, I have a podcast. I would love it if you subscribed. If you go to loanofficerwealth.com, that's where you can subscribe to the podcast. And I had a, a woman that I interviewed yesterday or the day before, and she gave me the rule of 40 times four. So um, if we do the math on this, every real estate agent that you do business with should send you four referrals a year, okay? Your job on your referral partner marketing is to get to 40 realtors sending you business. If that sounds outrageous in your marketplace, there's far more of them than you can imagine, and we only need four deals each. Somebody help me out with the math on this. If you've got 40 referral partners sending you four deals a year, what's 40 times four? 160, right? Now, take 160 and times by $2,500. 160 times 25, I can't do that in my head. Not in front of people. Ferrari. Is the answer? $400,000? Ferrari. Mid-level Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> Inflation, right? Um, $400,000 a year to do two things. Make a couple of phone calls on every deal once a week. Can we all do this? Yes. One person can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and he's drinking beer right now. Come on, be one. All right, now I understand that it's great to stand on stage and talk to you about getting realtor referral partners, but it's messy. And let's face it, realtors, they're not loyal. There's all kinds of stuff you gotta do in the relationship. Some of them are gonna ask for kickbacks and whatever and all this messy stuff you gotta go through. Listen, I got into the mortgage business 14 years ago because my dad was a mortgage broker, still is, but he's starting to retire and wind down his business and everything. We got a little second mortgage thing we do. Um, but he, I don't know what I did when I was a kid to deserve this from him, but I did something bad when I was a kid. I don't know what it was. But when I got into the mortgage business, he put me on the rate sheets and donut circuit. And he was like, okay, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get in your car and you're gonna drive around to all the real estate offices in town three days a week and you're gonna fill your car with boxes, donuts, and rate sheets. And you're just gonna go stand in the front office of the real estate offices and hand out donuts and rate sheets. And that's how you're gonna grow your business. So I did some wrong when I was a kid. Um, it <laughs> doesn't work, by the way. I'm not recommending that any of us try that. But I know what it's look like to work with realtors. It, through that excruciating process, I came to the realization and understanding that if you can bring a deal to a real estate agent, you've won, right? All they want is a pre-approved buyer. And if you have that, 
you win. So the first way to go do that is to work your database. Do the database activator, get pre-approvals from referrals from your past customers, and then have a hot list. Every single one of you should have a list of the 40 realtors in your local marketplace that are doing volume so they can actually send you business and that you think you would actually have a good working relationship with, which is like remove the assholes off the list so you don't have to work with them, right? When you get a new pre-approved deal that's not tied to an existing realtor, you call the first person on the list. Hey, you got a pre-approved buyer. Would you call me back? I'd like to talk about how I can help you grow your business with a pre-approved buyer. Are you gonna get a call back? Yes. Are you gonna get the opportunity to do the deal? Yes. Are you gonna do the status date update once a week so that they learn about your new pre-approval product that you have <laughs> so that they can tell other people about it and do business with you? Yes, can we win? Is that relatively easy? Yes. There's only so many pre-approvals that we can do, right? So we have the irresistible offer. The irresistible offer is to go up to your real estate agents because guess what your real estate agents aren't doing? They're not following up on their leads and they're not following up on their database. So you offer to have your concierge do it for them. So when you're talking to your real estate partners, all you do is you say, hey look, I've got this service called the irresistible offer. You can call it something cooler than that. And they go, irresistible offer? I say, yeah, because it's irresistible to you. What I'm going to do is do all your work for you and bring you pre-approved buyers. Does that sound cool? That does sound cool. How does that work? Well, you give me all the leads that you've generated in the past 60 to 90 days. Me and my team are gonna reach out, we're gonna pre-approve them for you and send them back to you. Does that sound fair? That does sound fair. Free work, free deals, that's great. And by the way, when's the last time you called your past clients? Have you called your past clients in the last 90 days? No, oh, I can help put a system in place for that for you as well. Let's go get you some deals, does that sound good? Yes, easy way to win a relationship when you're having the first conversation with the real estate agent, right? So the way the irresistible offer works, um, this is our client, Mike. He went out and in, uh, in the States, Zillow is a big deal. Um, in Canada, there's all kinds of lead providers. If you're talking to a real estate agent that's in the top 20% of your marketplace, there's a very, very, very good chance that they're buying leads from somewhere. They're either funding their own budget on Google and Facebook or they're buying leads from a third party provider. They are not calling those leads. They're not going, doing a good job on the follow up. Some of them might be dumping them into a CRM that's doing the follow-up, that's not doing a really great job. But here's the secret. You actually have a better offer than the real estate professional does. Because they've all opted in to try and get information on a specific home or a specific property, right? Well, when they put their information in and it unlocks the photos on Zoho or whatever service it is that they're using, and they decide that they're not gonna buy that house, the likelihood of the real estate agent getting a call back from that lead just dropped to zero because they all think that the real estate agent is gonna chase them to go see a house they already know they don't wanna go see. So they're not gonna respond back. When you reach out, your script is, hi, my name's Chris. You requested property information from my real estate partner, Bob. Bob asked me to give you a call today because I'm his preferred mortgage broker and I can let you know how much home you qualify to buy and what your rate of payment will be in today's environment. Would that be of value to you? Yes, it would, because everybody wants to know how much house they can buy and what the rate is, but they, they're not interested in the property anymore. So you can actually convert more leads than the real estate agent can from the real estate agent's leads. And you get the leads for free. They buy them, they pay for them, they give them to you because they're like, Haha, the mortgage broker won't generate anything off these leads and I just got rid of them. You put them into a CRM process that automatically follows up you get a pre-approval, you get one pre-approval out of a list of 100 past leads that they've generated and you've won the realtor referral relationship. So the irresistible offer is, hey, I can work your leads for you for free, I can help you work your database. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Everybody can do that? Yep. Awesome. Hey, one, 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 one. Yes? I've done presentations in front of rooms with realtors and ask them how many of them have a database and how many of them maintain the database outside of Excel spreadsheet and half the time the answer is, what's the database? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So their broker of record has on file the transaction data from what they've done. And you can provide incredible value to those realtor relationships by getting them organized enough to go to the broker of record, download their deals from the past year, and get them organized so that they can make those phone calls to them right there they're going to pull one or two deals out if they make those calls. You're gonna to have to put the groundwork in, so 
I would do the background work of, okay, how many deals are they closing? Are they going to be able to send me a deal every other month or whatever it is, right? If they can, it's worth doing the work up front. And then what we do and what our people do, we provide the CRM to them for free. So our CRM is $147 a month. Use, use the, I'm not promoting our products. I'm just saying like get a CRM product. They're all relatively cheap. You can have sub accounts under main accounts. It's like whatever, $147 a month to have a top producing realtor giving you their database for you to work for free. I'll pay $147 for that, right? So solve the problem. Don't just pitch the end. We're not in the business of selling solutions. We're in the business of selling opportunity. So you go to the realtor and you say, listen, you have this problem over here, right? The opportunity in your database, if you've got 35 deals that you've closed in this last year, right? And we can get 5% of those people to refer you to somebody who's gonna buy a house. Each house is $750,000, you're gonna make two and a half percent. How many deals are you gonna do? What's the math? Okay, great, so if we go to your broker of record and get this database, it's worth about $300,000 to you. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that's great, okay, cool. Let's make that phone call now. Solve that problem once for them, and you've started a referral relationship for life. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you. Sweet. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right. Next up, financial planner and insurance referrals. We're going to go through this one really, really quick. How many of you are dealing with financial planners on a regular basis? Okay, good. A smattering. You can or you can't. Again, this is one of those things that that's how you want to grow your business. But what happens at the end of the year after you've processed a mortgage transaction with one of your clients? If they're working with a financial planner, the financial planner needs all of the mortgage documents, right? They need to know what happened on the financial statement, how much they pay, all that good stuff, right? Same thing with an insurance advisor. So when you close a deal, at the very end of your script with your team that's funding that deal, you ask the question, are you currently working with a financial advisor or an insurance professional? And they say yes. You get the contact information of the financial planner. After the deal closes, you call and you say, hey, this is Chris Johnstone. We have a mutual client, blah, blah, blah. They just funded a mortgage with me. Did you know that roughly 70% of people that fund a mortgage buy a car or make another major financial decision within that time period? I think there might be a great opportunity here for you to connect with your client and have another discussion about their plan right now. What I'd like to do is I'd like to send you over the documentation that you need that you're gonna be chasing for in six months so that you don't have to do the work. And would you be open to 15 minutes to talk about how we can grow our businesses together? Does that sound fair? Who else is doing that? Nobody. You can literally trim off the top 10% of the financial planners in your marketplace by just asking your clients if they're working with one. It's one question that you add to your closing process they can set up an entire pipeline of new professionals sending you business. So again, let's go back to the initial exercise that we did. Think about if you've got four new financial planners and each of them are sending you four deals a year, four, eight, 12, 16, 16 additional deals a year, we're asking one question at the end of each transaction. Everybody here can do that, right? Cool. You with me? We're going to go through this one really quick. So you can't see this at the back here, but this is our in, our internal stats. We invested $193,318.75. See that dad thing that I just had to do? I'm a dad now, so when I get in front of the screen, sometimes I have to go like this, and sometimes I have to go like this. <laughs> it's new to me. I'm still, I'm still working on it. But that was our money like our company's money that we invested in advertising to generate leads. I left all the math in here for you, but on average from Facebook, we generated refinance leads at $13.15, and our Google ad leads uh, cost us $14.93. You can run refinance ads on Google and fund loans profitably from people that are looking for refinances online. One main reason why. They're the ones that are looking for the refinance deals. This also works for reverse mortgages. It works for all of the different niche products that you have. We've got clients that are doing um, ads just specifically for dentists, doctors, and lawyers that are looking for like specific mortgage products just for them. You can run a very tight keyword list on a very small grouping of people, not generate a whole ton of leads, but the leads that come in are very high quality because they're the ones looking for you 
it's not you bombarding their Facebook newsfeed with what well, you might qualify for a mortgage and everybody who can't qualify for a mortgage fills it out because they're like, hey, maybe I can qualify for a mortgage, right? That's what happens on Facebook. When somebody goes and looks for a specific mortgage product on Google, that's somebody that you want to talk to because they're already looking for you. So what we do is we run an ad and I've got ad copy there for you. We'll run an ad on Google. So this is one of our clients. He's based out of Barrie, Ontario. I've, I will not disclose who the client is, but I can disclose some of the back end statistics. So in the last 30 days, so this, I pulled this screenshot this morning and I put it into the ad. Uh, we generated leads at $12.38. Our conversion rate on our lead generation page was 36.38%. I mean, 36% of the people that click the advertisement and go to the website leave us their information so that we can contact them, right? High intent of purchase. So we're running ads, we're generating those leads for about $12.38. This is the actual lead generation page that we're driving them to that's getting 36% of those people to fill out their information. There's a very simple quiz on that page where we ask them, how much is your home worth? Uh, what do you think the house is worth? What's your credit score? Are you currently employed? And first name, last name, email address. You basically ask them the questions that you need to qualify them so that you know how hard you need to work on getting in touch with that person after they fill out the information, which is not very hard because all of the leads automatically go into the CRM that does the follow-up with the text messages and the emails and the ringless voicemails so that you can get a hold of them. When they respond back to you, you get a notification, you pick up the conversation, take the application and fund the deal. Um, this is our client. Uh, with the first 100 refinance leads using that connection in funnel, they booked 26 application appointments. 26% of the leads booked an appointment with them automatically through the follow-up sequence, took 14 applications, and so far they've closed four of those applications in the first 45 days. Cool stuff? All right, cool. The highest quality online leads, we're almost done here. Um, this is one of our clients, Mike. In the first six months of this year, which was last year, he closed 34 deals as a result of his Google business profile, okay? Um, there are three things. Does everybody know what a Google business profile is? Quick show of hands. If you know what a Google business profile is, put your hands up, okay, all right. So we're all good here, okay. Okay, so highest quality consumer direct leads. Our buddy Mike, he funds one out of every five phone calls that he gets from Google. And there's a key component there, phone calls, okay? We're not trying to drive leads into a funnel. What we're trying to do is achieve what James has done. Have a process in place in your business to get five-star reviews from the, from the people that you're doing business with. Seed it throughout the conversation that you're having with them through the deal process that, hey, when we get this deal funded, can we agree that's worth a five-star review on Google? Not Yelp, not anywhere else, just Google, okay? At the end of the process, you need an automatic follow-up sequence that follows up to get them to leave the review, but get them to agree to do it up front. Get as many five-star reviews as you can because people read the reviews. I've got a new tip for you on the rating and review thing. Please take this to heart. Your realtor partners, financial planners, and investment advisors are the absolute best salespeople that you can have working for you on Google. Because what I've discovered through one of our really genius clients out of the States is that when somebody reads a rating and review from a customer, it's like they see them on the same level. When they read a rating and review from a realtor, they go, wait a minute, the realtor is doing business with all of the mortgage brokers and all of the people in the marketplace and they've chosen this business to refer, that's worth more than a rating and review from a customer. So you need to put together a process while you're making your calls and you're going out and you're generating those realtor referral relationships that we talked about, that you're asking those people when they fund a deal with you for the realtor to leave you a review about the process. It will convert far more of the people. We've got clients where they have people in the marketplace that have far more reviews than they have and they're getting more phone calls because the reviews are more compelling than the number of reviews that they have. Here's another quick tip on that. Before you ask the realtor to leave you a review, leave one on their profile. So if you know you're going to be meeting with a realtor, you know you're gonna be talking with a realtor in the next couple of days, go on to their Google business profile, leave them a five-star review, talk about how awesome they are, they'll bring it up in the conversation. You don't have to ask them. They'll say, thank you for leaving me that review. Oh yeah, yeah, it's something I'm working on my business. Would you 
would you do the same for me? Would you do that for me? It's real easy to get those professional referrals to leave you those five-star reviews. So we're gonna focus on that. And then social alchemy, this is just the process of every deal you close, you tag them in the CRM, it automatically asks them for the Google review. And then ranking organically. So this is a tool, it's called <coughs> local, local Falcon. L-O-C-A-L, Falcon, F-A-L-C-O-N. You can go there for free, you can punch in your business address, and it will actually show you where you're ranked on the map, okay? If you're sitting in your office and you Google mortgage broker, you're always coming up on the front page because you're sitting in the office. If you're searching for your business, most likely you will always come up on the front page because Google knows enough about you that they know that it's your business and that's what you want to see, right? Algorithms are pretty smart. This tool will actually show you whether or not you are ranking on the front page, and it will show you the radius around your location where you're actually showing up on the front page. Then there's a tab on the left-hand side where it says competition. You click on that competition tab and it will show you how well your competitors are ranked in the same location. From that, you can then use other tools like Ahrefs, which is A-H-R-E-F-S, to find out how many backlinks they have to their profile, how many articles they've published, all of that. Then you just pay a company to duplicate the work that they have done and then do a little bit more. And within 30 to 60 days, you pass them on the search rankings and you take over the radius that they were previously ranked in. Make sense? Yeah. Gotta love the internet, man. It's awesome. Oh, uh, one other thing. Google has a new, it's not new, but there's a tool that most of you aren't using and it's a status update. So status updates on your Google business profile. Everybody's pouring all this time, money, effort, and energy into making Facebook posts, creating the content, and then not putting it on their Google business profile. It's the number one ranking factor for 2022 on whether your Google business profile is gonna show up on the front page is how often you do that status update. The other really cool ninja thing that we've discovered is that your phone will automatically geotag the photos that you take and the search algorithm on Google actually reads the geotag information on the photos that you take. So when you are doing your status updates on your Google business profile, take photos around town while you're driving around, right? Landmarks, favorite restaurants, things that people see when they go in town, the local church, whatever it is, take photos of that stuff, upload them as status updates on Google, you're getting extra points over your competitors because you're feeding geolocation information onto your profile that your competitors aren't because you're putting localized photos on your profile. Status updates at least once a week, localized photos that go on, and duplicate the backlink profile that your competitor has done in their local marketplace, and you win. Cool? I believe that is all the time that we have here together. Um, I would love if you followed me on social media. Every so often I post travel pictures, but I also share um, business tips on how to grow your mortgage business. My name is Chris Johnstone. Gordon Gord, thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And if you would like us to get on the phone with you and map out your own personal mortgage marketing strategy in your mortgage business, you can head on over to cigrowthcall.com. That's cigrowthcall.com. On that presentation, we will literally go through your business, identify the lowest hanging fruit for you, and then help you map out a marketing strategy in order to go get that business. Now, at the end of that call, if you feel like you would like our help in implementing those systems in, that, in your business, we will help you install the software and train the people that you need in order to manage those systems for you. Or if you wanna just take the plan and do it on your own, that's totally cool too. Either way, you're gonna leave the call with a 100% actionable plan to grow your mortgage business. Again, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.